But that's it. A very warm welcome to you all. And I'd like to dive straight in with um, in the conversation with Eniola. Eniola, are you able to um, switch on your video? Okay, yes. We are have it. it. Hi. Nice to get you. Hi. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So um, I'm going to dive right in with questions. Um, so maybe we can start with an introduction. Um, from my side, I can mention that in your life, you have been on Sydney right from the beginning, I think, from what, some of the very first competitions and um, is now a data scientist for a causal foundry. But um, maybe I can hand over to you in order to say a few words about who you are and what you're going to be doing before we start talking about your journey. Okay. Hi guys, my name is Enigola. So I work currently for a startup called Causal Foundry. And what we do basically is AI for strictly health care. So to personalize health care to people, to low and middle income resource community. So that's what I do. And yes, my data science journey started with Zindi and uh, it's been great so far. Great. Thanks, Daniela. So yeah, let's, let, uh, I think start at the beginning for those who don't know your story. How did you first find out about data science and how did you find out about Zindi and how did you get started? Okay. So there was this boot camp, I think, was it 2020 or 2019? That was actually the year I joined. Zindi as well. So there was this boot camp by Data Science Nigeria. So they organized the boot camp and we were all to join an hackathon. And uh, through the hackathon, we have people that are going to join the boot camp be selected. So I joined the boot camp. That was actually my first time with data science and anything related to machine learning. I joined the boot camp as a the novice. Then they introduced us to Zindi. And uh, the person that introduced us was like, if you go to Zindi, you're going to be able to compete and you get used to the world of machine learning, data science, and AI. And it was interesting, interesting because like for every competition I saw that time, I'll be like, wow, the price is quite high. So, okay, let's take this thing up. Let's see how far we can go with this. Then that was how I started with Zindi and almost every competition I'll just join, even if I'll not be ranked on top, just to see how far I can go with it. And that was our trend. Yes, and, and and I mean, what what was your feeling then? You you weren't intimidated, or you weren't worried that you were going to win prizes. You were just excited. It, there it, there was actually intimidation, intimidation from people that were well experienced. Because I found there was this guy at that time, Mohammed Jadid. I don't know if you know him. Do you know Mohammed? Yeah. So Mohammed was somebody I reached out to and was like, okay, if you could maybe be a mentor to me in this world of competitive data science because like you see a lot of people you just join to them before you know it's already on top so those guys have experience with cargo actually and they've been working as data scientists even before i joined zindi so they have experience munching data have experience doing a lot of stuff with data so there was there was that kind of thing there yeah right, and you and you just uh you just reached out to somebody who looked like they were really doing well Yes, so I reached out to them to just put me through in something. So they'll share links of maybe past competitions they have won, their links to their code, and I'll learn from it. Then that was how I started like moving up bit by bit up to the level. Yeah. It's amazing. And uh, yeah, so so I mean, tell me about yeah, the, the time. Uh, because as you said, when you started you you weren't really doing very well. So how did you how do you think you got so far on Zindi and Convention? Okay, so the beginning, I think the motive was not to really win at the beginning. The motive was to own my skill, like to really be able to tell people that, okay, I do data science and I do it very well. That was the motive to just understand it through because that time, because I don't have much experience. If you apply for a job, nobody's going to give you a job because you don't have an experience. So the motive was, okay, get experience from working with at least close to real world data because most of these competitions now are from companies. Companies will throw out their data to Zindi and Zindi will provide it to us to just work with it. So that way I can get myself with the feel of real world data and really work with it. So I think uh, moving up the leaderboard started 2020, 2021. 
So that was when I started like enjoying the flow of actually working with data and like really getting accustomed to all those data science buzzword and tricks and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And it, uh, it really paid off because, uh, this last month mm -hmm. that in the deep, you, uh, at the uh, deep learning in Java, you won the deep hackathon. Yeah, I was forced. <laughs> was it, did it feel like it was easy now because you had a lot of experience or it was still a challenging event? So proud, proud to me joining the competition. There's usually this tension, but for this in that bound, it was just, there was this flow that, okay, we've done it for, let's just go with the flow. There was no tension. Let's just see what we can do. And before you know it, uh, the, I was working on top. Yeah. So you were relying on the skills you developed from previous previous challenges for previous challenges exactly yes. that's super cool well done um okay so i wanted to then talk a little bit on the uh, on the job and the interview side so uh, you were one of the first okay. people that uh, zindi helped to get a job we uh, i think we approached you directly um because uh the company was in fact uh, called benchy ai uh, it's the same company yeah. as you you've explained to mm -hmm. me NVI and Causal Foundry, it's the same company, but um, they approached us and, and we put forward some names of people who we thought were uh, promising candidates for them. Um, what was the interview process like for you? And did you learn, what, what did you learn from the interview process that you might be able to share today? Okay, so the, firstly, when I applied through Zendi, they sent me an a test so the test there uh, took seven days for me to complete the test but according to them i should submit before within a span of seven days so it was a proper machine learning based test so based on like competitions i work with i just took a template from some of those competitions i won and started working on the data so i think like i remember what the data content was on on art disease yeah i think this is like three years ago so the, the data was on art disease and they were like, build a model. So they were just like, build a model to predict if a person have art disease. So what I did was after building the model, I documented the whole process, wrote about like the insight I, I was able to see from some exploratory data analysis, wrote it in a document. That was not asked actually. I did that separately, just documented every of the process because if you win a competition, you'll be asked to actually share like the documents, like how you tell us about the libraries you use, tell us about like just give. So I did that separately and even added buttons, like everything was, I did it more like a test this year. I had like an abstract, I had like methodology, then I had my result. So I think that was actually the, the convincing part for them because they were like, okay, if somebody could actually take his time out of what was not asked to actually document this let's let's check out this person then after i think a, a week after they go back to me and we're like they would like to interview me in person through zoom call so i was interviewed and some questions were popping up different questions like when did you start your journey how has it been like firstly they asked me to run through my approach with them i went through my codes explain the insight and all those kind of things and that was it then i waited some week after and they were like okay they're going to give me the job i'm like okay that's cool <laughs> you think yeah i think i think it's really great that you've highlighted the, the going going above and beyond the expectations not mm -hmm. just building a model because i won't say anyone can build a model but a model sure. is just a model alone isn't maybe what sets you aside but how you think about it, how you write about it, where you communicate around those skills that may yeah. actually set you apart from the dish. Sure, sure. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Okay, so so now what is your job like now? Can you tell us a little bit, maybe like a, a normal day in, in the life of your work? Uh, what kind of projects do you work on? Okay, so we work strictly with healthcare partners. Uh, We've worked, we've worked with different kinds of partners. So currently I'm working with a partner that do, uh, they are into pharm they are a pharmacy. So they have like different branches. So what we do for them is we have survival analysis model we build. 
So the survival analysis model will tell us which kind of customer is going to stay in the long run or which cost, which kind of customer is going to be. That's one aspect. And apart from that, also we do recommendation engine. So recommend that system that can just nudge users and be like, okay, this particular customer purchased this good with this good. Why can't you check out this good? So it might be something I want to purchase. So that's on the side. So we personalize incentive as well. So our the core of what we do in causal foundry is building nudge, not just to actually convince people that this item is what you should purchase or how to just personalizing healthcare to ease people's life. So there is similarities with it, with competitive data science with what I do in Benchy. The skill set, you have to understand machine learning algorithm. You have to understand data processing techniques. And this is the same thing you are going to be using as a competitive data scientist in platform like Synthi. Then toolkit as well. Toolkit are the same thing. You use Python libraries like Calder, Scikit, Let TensorFlow, PyTorch. Like it's the same toolkit that you use as working as a competitive data scientist and also working in causal foundry as a data scientist. So they are quite similar and they have differences also. Okay. So some of the very similar tools, but um, maybe uh, you're seeing more of the implementation as well, or are you just building models? Yeah, we, we implement also. We have, we've deployed several of our models. So we deployed think for, okay, sorry. No, go ahead. Go on. Yes, so I said for competitive data science, mostly our model is collected. So I think it depends on the company if they want to deploy it. But we we are going to like make sure our model is deployed. That's the on the engineering side. So I see it in action actually the deployed model. So do you think um was that something that you had to learn when you joined uh when you joined Benchy and, and Causal Foundry, or was that uh, you'd you'd done some model deployment during work? Because as you say, it's not something you do in Blindy. Sorry, I did not get it. Sorry, so I'm asking whether that was something you had to learn when you were on the job or it's something not you already knew. Deployment of models. So in we are work now, we have like a, I will not say too big of a team, but like the role is specified. So for the deployment of the model is on the data engineering aspect and the machine learning engineer. So may I focus strictly on just building the models around doing some analysis to just extract insight and be able to explain it to some stakeholder or partners. Right. So you, you've highlighted a, a few differences between what you do on Zindi and what you do causal foundry. What do you think is the, is the biggest difference uh, that you can see from, from when you were working on Zindi and, and now working at causal foundry? Uh, I think for me, the biggest difference might be the model complexity because for competitions, there's this push towards very complex model. We do a lot of assembly. We try to just squeeze out every bit of performance from the model. <laughs> Even if the gain is just like tiny, we like that. <laughs> but for reward, you know, you have to be able to interpret like what you are building. You have mm-hmm. to consider the deployment. So you don't want to build something that is too complex and it's going to just crash out the deployment. So there's that trade-off between, I think the biggest is actually the model complexity. And maybe what follows is feature engineering, because like you have to be able to, okay, tailor your features to be able to explain it properly. But in competitive data science, we are going to just build, as long as the feature is working, we, most time we are not always concerned about like how we are able to explain the feature we built, right. just right. as long as it's working there. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so so actually, I mean, what it sounds like is the being at the top of a competition isn't necessarily the most important thing to be prepared for the working world of data science. The important thing is that you you know how to build a model, you know how to explain your feature engineering, you know how to explain yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, communication is actually a very crucial part of being a data scientist because you need to be able to explain what you have done. Yeah. And do you think you've learned a lot in terms of improving communication since you started with, with this career? Uh, yes, actually, because I'm so that I, I really don't like to talk too much. Like even in school, I just like to do my thing. I just mm-hmm. query, but I think so far it has pushed me to just come out and speak. Yeah. 
Brilliant. Yeah, and I, I think I understand, especially, and I think it's true for many people working in technical careers. They they want to just work on their models and and build cool stuff, and but it doesn't matter if you can't explain what work you're doing and yeah. you can't communicate with your team. Cool. So, um, do you have some advice? So we have we have a number of people on the call today who probably where you were a few years ago, maybe they've done some boot camps, maybe they're, they're starting, they think they might be able to get a job in data science, but they're not there yet. What, what kind of advice would you offer people? Okay. I, I think I'm just going to use myself as an example. So mm, looking fine. at the job details back then when I was applying to Bench, like I was not qualified for that job, most of all, because of the requirements. Like the requirements was that like, you should have I think a, an MSc degree, even now it's just a BSc I still have. I just finished my schooling this year. So I was not qualified for the job, but I just threw out the application and okay, if they reject, or if they don't, let's see how it goes. So I think one thing is pe most of the people I've met, they try to want to be very, very overqualified for the job before they apply. So one thing I would just tell people is just apply for the job. Along the side, you should get, you should obviously be preparing to get the job. So, but apply first of all, even if you are qualified, even though if you are not qualified, first thing, just throw out your application. You can never tell what will happen. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would be the right. most good advice. If I think it's really good advice. I think uh, a lot of people want to be able to tick every, uh, every criteria on the job application before they even think about applying that you've got to. You've got to be like really self-confident and just put yourself out there, even if you think you're not ready. And we, I mean, when, when I'm speaking to uh, businesses that are busy recruiting now, people are struggling to find talent. So they have to compromise on the requirements because yeah. it's very hard to find good data science talent. So true. Even currently my company, we, we need data scientists. We are actually looking out for people to employ. Correct. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, uh, if you have a, if you have any job, uh, job or open job applications or descriptions, or, uh, maybe that's something that you can share with, with the, with the guys on the, on the group, if you have a, a link or maybe an email address that people can send, that would be really awesome. That's a really nice thing for somebody to, to at least they can try, you know? Mm -hmm. Sure. 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 <laughs> so for our for our uh for our chat for our group listening if you want to work with any other we you tend to keep an eye out and we'll make sure we we send them those details for you so i i want to wrap up and uh, this is more just a fun question that i like to ask the indians if you could see any okay. new feature on the zindi platform what would you what would you like to <laughs> that's the question is for me right that's the question for you yeah <laughs> Okay, I think one thing I would like to see, and I, I think I put it in the, my last train also. So if you look at so okay, I don't think it's some, I think it's just one I've seen. So what I would like to see is if people can share visible codes, like you can just see the codes on the platform or just maybe even run it on the platform, that kind of thing. Or not necessarily run it, but like you'll be able to communicate with the codes on the platform, more like a kernel. Yeah. Let's say I'm working on a particular competition now and I got a particular score. I can just decide, okay, to open source the code for people to learn and also maybe start with it yeah. to be visible, not just like sharing the scripts. Yeah. I will, we'll put it on our to-do list. It's not easy to do, let me tell you. We don't so I know, I know. about the kernel. It's the, the, the very big challenge, but I think it would be great. I think it would improve things. Yeah. So I have one question from the chat. Uh, the question okay. is, can you tell us what model you used to win your first competition? And how complex was it? Uh, okay, I think it was cut post. I think it, it should be a mixture of cat boost and SG boost because that time it was I know competition I started using SG boost also for that is if it's a classical machine learning challenge my go-to is always SG boost then I discovered cat boost and found out that it can automatically undo categorical features and it can just fine-tune it easily than SG boost and it's faster 
also than SG boost. So my go-to most time now is cut boost. So I think it should be between SG boost and cut boost. I'm not really sure about between those two. So nothing too nothing too crazy or complicated. No, nothing too crazy or complicated. I like to start simple actually, then walk bits by bits. Okay. Yeah. I have one more question here. Um the question says, I've realized the model creation isn't so difficult, but what is your process to engineer and encode new features or generate new features? Okay, so for new features, okay, let me use the last conversation now to just explain this. So we, during Indaba, there was a competition and it was on protein. Yeah, so I, in, I think these guys, they like protein very much. That's Insta, depending on most of their competitions are on this protein, protein, molecular, yeah. So a starter notebook was given to us and you will see a lot of neural network and CNN and how to go about it. So that particular competition, the data was in form, it was a tabular data in form of CSV. And for me, if I'm working with CSV, I like to be very creative with the data. So the starter notebook was not giving me ideas of the features to create. So I abandoned the starter notebook and just decided to start from scratch. So starting from scratch, first thing I did was to go and do a bit of reading on the, on the data set and on the features. So I saw some formulas online and I just decided to recreate it and see how they are going to perform. So most time what you want to do is to understand a bit, even if it's not much, try and understand like the domain of the kind of competition you're working with. So if you understand the domain, you're going to be able to build features that are useful to that domain. So you'll be saying terms like protein. I'm not like a medical student, so I may not understand it properly. But if I go online, I can see stuff. Even if maybe it's a paper, you can get ideas or features to create from the paper relating to that competition. Yeah, yeah and that's it. Yeah, so so really trying to actually understand the data that you're working with rather than just relying on a model. Exactly. And actually having some kind of uh, like human context and understanding. Yeah. It's quite a big place. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, okay, and then there's one request that you can share your contact details, maybe your social media account. I I know uh, you have been working on a new YouTube channel. Uh, if there's anything else you'd like to shout out or share, this is the time to do it. Yes, uh, I, can, I think I'll just get the link of the YouTube channel and maybe my Twitter. And do I sent my Twitter on the chat. Yeah, you can just pop it into the chat. Ah, uh, there I see it on on the chat. Okay, fantastic. If you yeah, if you have if you want to share your YouTube link or any any other links you'd like to share, please feel free. I'm sure the the chat would love to. Yeah. Okay, I'll just pick my YouTube channel and I'll come. That sounds great. Okay, we do have one other question. So maybe I'll let okay. you I'll let you share that shoe blink. Okay, there you go. There's uh there's Ella's uh, YouTube channel. Thank you so much. So then there's one question here. What's the likelihood of a smooth transition from being a software engineer to a career in data science? And does the background in software engineering contribute to this transition? Yeah, I think I think I was to go back and actually start to build a career in data science, I think I will start as being a software engineer first. Like if I were to go back in time, like I think I would just take it. So <laughs> I'm going to start as a software engineer, first. not to work as a software engineer, just to understand like the rudiments and like some basic software engineering practice, because it will actually help you a lot as a data scientist in the way you structure your code, in the way you work with some of those. Because when I joined Benchy, I, I needed to go and learn how to use GitHub. Like I just, because yeah. I was not using it. I just dumped my code manually. I needed to learn how to like write proper scripts and manipulate scripts because normally I was just working with IPYNB file, Colab or just my Jupyter. So I think being a software engineer and you want to transition will actually really help you because of all those kind of stuff. Yes.
it's, it should be smooth. Just understand some algorithms and be able to explain them. Know how to build more there, or know how to do some exploratory data analysis. And maybe you want to find a particular area you want to focus on computer vision, NLP, reinforcement learning. And maybe the large language model that is the buzzword nowadays that is anywhere you go now, everybody's shouting chat GPT. <laughs> And how did you um how did you learn those things? You know the 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 fundamentals of software engineering. Did you just practice it because you had to, or was there particular resources you used? Uh, so because I, I have to do it on the job, so I just picked up some random YouTube channel or just some just quick Google search and just look at it up. And once I'm using it, most time it just stick because I use it every time now. It's not something I have to go and look again. I'm used to it already. Yeah. Look, oh, great. Um, and then we have one more question. What advice would you give to allow people to become more active on Zindi? How can people get more active? To become active on Zindi. Mm. That's the question. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think why most people run away most time is if they see that they are not actually doing well. So it happens to everybody. Like everybody wants to do well, and if they see, ah, my mother is not doing it, just abandon it. So most time, all you want to do is if you join a competition, just do it for the sake of learning. Don't do it. Well, the prize is there to motivate you, but you know you are going to learn something. So what I would advise people is once you join a competition. Look at it in four different ways. There are four different things you can do to actually be on top. You can either focus on the data, that is one, or you decide to focus on the algorithm, that is two, or you do tuning or you assemble. So if you are focusing on the data, first of all, you know you can do a lot of feature engineering. Just stick to the data, first of all, and see how much engineering you can do, how you can understand the data. Once you see that is not working, jump to algorithms. Go online, search for like best practice, best used algorithm, maybe the latest algorithm, try it out. If that is not working, tuning is there. Try and like tune your hyperparameter tuning or see the best parameters to use. If that is not working, you also have examples. Try and just match two models together and see how it works. One of these four will actually work. So most time, your data is already there to even help you out. Like if you look at the data, Ideas will call, right? Okay, I can join these two together. I can divide this. I can do this. Based on the domain knowledge you have gathered within the space of the competition, idea will come from data. And you can just shuffle between the four things. I'll repeat data, algorithm, tuning, and assembles. And I think you are good. It's really, really powerful advice. I, we always uh, <laughs> laugh about the the assembling models at Cindy because it's like the it's like the brute force approach is the last resort. Nothing else is working. You just assemble like twenty or thirty models, and our data team hates it because it takes so long to run. It's not really practical as well. You won't see huge model assemblies like that in the real world. But it sometimes it can get you that extra one percent on the leader for sure. sure. <laughs> But uh, I'll uh, I'll ask everybody listening not to do that because my data science team will kill me. <laughs> Please don't assemble twenty models to win a competition. Yeah, I've I've seen solutions like that so when people release their public their solutions after winning. And like the winning trick there is just the assemble. Yeah, just the just assembling. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> and and I can I can promise you. That's not useful in the real world. Nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to do. I mean, maybe assembling two models, but when you when you start assembling ten or more, that like, it's impossible to use that in. Mm. in the world. Okay, I think that has been a really really good chat. I'm gonna wrap up there because we do have a demonstration uh, to to go on with. Um, any other? Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed it. I hope uh, hope everybody else does. I think it's been super valuable. I hope you enjoyed yourself as well. Yeah, dude. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, all the best. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so thank you, Aniola. So next up, I am going to share my screen again. Uh, next up, we're going to... We're going to... Uh,
I'm going to share a video from Daniel Brankis. He's another Zindian data scientist. He was actually going to join the call, but wasn't able to. So I asked him to just uh, deliver us a little message, a message of support, and then we'll go dive into the actual demonstration. Hello, guys. My name is Daniel, and I'm greeting you from Cape Town, South Africa. I've been competing on Zindi for about two years now. And recently, with the help of Zindi, I landed my first professional role as a data scientist. So, just a few months ago, I received communication from Zindi about their job opportunity. Zindi reached out because I excelled in one of their competitions with the skills well aligned with the company's job requirements. I am pleased to say that I was accepted for the role and went on to produce work that the company now greatly values. I would just like to encourage you guys to always do your best to improve on your solutions. Whether or not the new methods you incorporate result in an improvement of your scores, you can still be certain that you've learned something valuable to add to your skill set when tackling future projects. I wish everyone all the best in your future endeavors, and I will see you guys on the leaderboards. Cheers, cheers. So I, uh, I think Daniel's message is really similar to Eniola's, uh, yeah, which is that you don't have to win every competition it's a great as a motivation but actually every time you compete in a competition you are going to be learning and developing your skills and uh so that is a really easy or really good thing for me to Hello. transition from there into a demo of our talent search because uh, i hope that our talent search feature that we've just launched is going to be another type of motivation for you all to participate on Cindy. So um, let me get into it. Um, Talent Search is a new product on Cindy. It's a type of a database that we have produced, or I guess an interface for a database that we've uh, produced and released about a month ago. And the intention is that anybody looking to hire an analyst, an engineer, data scientist or like a sex cloud engineer, even software developers, um, any of those sorts of skills, data related skills, can search for the talent that they're looking for through our database. Um, so we have made a version of our database available to all of those people to, for them to search. And, um, this is a this is a, a new uh, revenue stream for Zindi. The intention is that we charge a small fee for customers and clients to access the database, and then we charge a placement fee if somebody makes our plan. The switch out of thought. Okay, I think the the best thing for me to do now is to show you so that you can get a sense of what people will be seeing when they sign up for the platform. Um, and so let me just change over to this screen. So this is now what the, what the platform looks like. As you can see, it is in beta. Yes, I see there's a request, uh, a request for uh, the recording. We will share the recording. So this is the platform. As you can see, it's in beta. But uh, at the moment, we're inviting people to sign up if they're interested in finding talent. Um, and here you can see how you conduct a search. So you can choose which country you search in. You have to pick a location. The moment, uh, um, and I guess I should say, this is just the beginning. This is essentially an MVP or a beta product. We are going to be adding more features as time goes by. So the moment you can pick one location. So as uh, say I'm a recruiter, I'm looking in Kenya. I don't have to input experience or education, but I can. I can say I want two to five years of experience. You can see that there's quite a wide range here. I can choose a level of education, anywhere from high school all the way through to a doctor degree or above. Let me choose bachelor's degree or equivalent. And then here you can see that there are a number of keywords. So in blue, you can see languages. Uh, languages and other what I would call hard skills or technical skills. So these are skills that you've reported yourself on the platform. Um, there's a section, and I'll demonstrate when I get to showing you Zindi profiles, there's a section where you can select uh, or you can add your languages and your level of skill in each of them. 
Um, and you can see that these are these are selectable. Yeah. Um, then in purple are broad skill set. Again, this is something that you can self-report. So we have stats and analysis. We have visualization. We have business intelligence, database management, cloud skills, and then classical machine learning skills. So you know, again, in purple, self-reported as uh, something that you can update in your profile. We will run through exactly how you would do that. And then finally, in orange, you have a number of more specific skills, and this is based on your participation in competition. So this is getting really to the, the really, to me, the most important part of what we're talking about today, which is that your behavior and your activity on Zindi feeds into this database and tells potential employees more about who you are as a data scientist. So now if we look through some of the competitions, um, rather some of the users, um, rather go through this before I go any further. Um, here you can see the, um, it search, how much a search shows up. So you can see the amount of experience. There's a, a picture here. And so I would encourage you all to make sure you have a good profile picture. Um, introduction location is shown, the degree is shown, uh, what is your bias degree, and then your skills show up here. So if we look at Julius, you can see that next numbers next to these orange um, skills. This is uh, the, the, these, these numbers are competitions that Julius has participated in. So you can see how um, you can see how the uh, the performance on, on the Zindi platform will show up in searches. So if, if you imagine you are a fintech company and you're looking for somebody with experience with financial modeling, who just looks like a really good match because he's had he's competed in nine financial services competition, two cryptocurrency challenges. That means he knows a bit about finance. So actually Zindi competitions and participating in Zindi competitions will demonstrate that you actually have practical skills in a field even if you haven't worked in that field specifically it will demonstrate that you you've learned some skills in that field and you understand the context a little bit so at the moment you can see that these are um filtered by rank you can also filter by level of profile completeness and we will in future um date there you can see it's changed to level of profile completeness and you can, uh, we'll, we'll be changing this and updating this in future to filter in other ways. Um, so here you can see now we filtered by completeness. This user hasn't uh, been ranked because he hasn't parted, he or she hasn't participated in a competition, but we have some skills. Rigid, yeah. Um, so, I mean, and this is, this goes on, you can keep adding more candidates. When as a as a business profile um, or a business user, you can uh, choose to get in touch with someone. So click the get in touch button that takes you directly to messaging. So you as a user can get messaged directly by businesses. Businesses uh, who've paid for access to the platform, they can click the get in touch button and that will take them to uh, take them to a messaging screen with you. They can also shortlist certain users. So there you can see sorry my internet's a little bit slow but you can act, uh, use it as a business user you can save certain users and then uh, that will then also show up on my short list. so see I have a short list uh, you can see it taking a little bit time to load and there now you can see it. some users shortlisted um, I'll show you briefly Okay, sorry, so this is now strange. And yeah, I want to show you briefly what um, happens if you click on the profile. This profile is very, very similar to your public Zindi profile um, with a few key differences. Here you can see there's a way to shortlist somebody directly on their profile. Um, there's a way to download their CV. At the moment, this is a CV that you've uploaded, but in future, we will auto generate CVs based on your behavior on Zindi, and that will be what the CV will look like. And you'll be able to download that CV as well. Um, and then this is 
the rest of this is basically what a normal Zindi profile now looks like. And we'll go into that in more detail, but you can see ranking, um, statistics of your activity, number of medals, tools. Here you can see the self-assessment matrix uh, that we spoke about before. So stats, business intelligence, cloud computing, et cetera. And then you can see competitions, top performances, uh, work and education, contributions to the, the comments that you've made if you've shared solutions and so on. So um, the next thing to then for us to look at is I want to show you the profile side of things. So uh, as you can see, we now have a way for a lot of businesses to look in the user. Um, I think that has a, a clear, it, that gives a clear incentive to you as a Zindi user that you'd like your profile to look as good as possible. And our vision ultimately is that Zindi profiles serve as your data science portfolio. You don't need LinkedIn, you don't need a CV, you just need a Zindi profile and that'll get you high. That's the, that's the plan. It's a long-term plan, but this is where we start. Um, so your profile now has the possibility to attract business to your profile to help you connect with potential employers directly and help you get hired and land your dream job as a data science professional. So a few tools that we've introduced in the last few months, you might have seen blue click showing up next to your profile name or on the Zindi leaderboards. This is what we call verified. Uh, this verification check mark indicates that you are actively participating on Zindi and that you're interested in getting hired and you achieve a Zindi verification checkmark really very easily. You have to verify your email. You have to make one submission on the platform, at least in any competition, and you have to complete your profile to 80%. And remember that we provide starter notebook for all our challenges. So um, making submissions should be really easy for you. And then there at the bottom, you can see how it shows up on the leaderboards with that little blue tick. That also shows up for people searching. So you won't so you won't show up on um, talent searches if you don't have a verified. So I would really strongly encourage you to do that. It's very easy to do. One other thing before I uh, go into the profiles directly, the really really important aspect of your profile how to get found on Zindi. So you'll see there's uh, easy steps. Uh, you go to edit your profile or you go to uh, zindi.intrict forward slash me. That will allow you to edit your profile. Under the My Career tab, there's a section that says for recruiters and you need to find a section that says, a, a, a radio button that says actively seeking employment or consulting choose in data plan. This ensures that you can show up in searches and that recruiter can contact you directly. Um, but I'll demonstrate this as well. So uh, now I'm going to take you over to what it actually looks like on Lindy. If you don't know this stuff already, um, I need to just sign out of Talent Search. So you can see the Talent Search and uh, what? Talent Search and the normal Zindi platform are actually separate entities. Eventually they'll be the same, but for now they're separate. So now I'm going to sign in. Um, what I can do now is go here and I can add pick directly to edit profile or I can go to my profile. This is what my profile currently looks like. Um, my profile doesn't look all that good because I'm not a data scientist myself, but here you can see I've filled out my, where I work, my location, my languages, some of my um, social media. You can also share your GitHub link here, which I really recommend everybody does. And I've got, uh, I think something I'd really, really like to see more people competing. Um, the great way to let businesses know a little bit more about you. Uh, so I would really recommend that. And, um, here we have rankings, my statistics of, of participation on competitions and conversations, comments, discussions, both medals. I obviously don't have any medals because I don't participate in competitions. I've listed my main tools and languages and there's competitions, work, contributions. So now 
Um, as I said, you can go to your top right and click edit profile, but you can also just choose the edit profile button here. And here we can see what the edit profile screen looks like. Across the top, you have a profile completed bar. If you haven't completed this, it'll be somewhere down here. There'll actually be a list that guides you in how to complete your profile effectively. Um, so it's actually very easy to do. You just follow the instructions and you'll get verified. This drop down will show I'm verified. If you aren't verified, I would, um, it will look different here. So you, it, it's very easy to know if you are or aren't verified. Um, uh, again, strongly recommend that you ho the, that you upload a picture. Um, there's a lot of research that suggests people get hired more are more likely to get hired if there's a picture of them smiling on their CV. Uh, sounds maybe trivial, but it's true. It's then here you have a num uh, 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 section on personal information. You can fill that out. Uh, this is all the stuff that appears across the bar of your profile. You can list my current workplace here. Yeah. Here you can add social links, LinkedIn, Twitter, and GitHub. Well, X now. GitHub, you can add others, but I strongly recommend adding Git links so that people can see your practical portfolio. And we are working on ways to integrate GitHub more, um, more closely with Cindy. So, um, then you can add your bio here. I, again, I strongly recommend that you add your bio. And then we move on to the most important part that we're going to discuss today, which is the My Career section. So here you have some guidance about how you can um, best fill out your My Career section. It's straight, relatively straightforward. And you'll see, you can see along the side, there are a lot of sections. So make sure you get all the way to the bottom of this page. Um, so you can um, submit your monthly salary. It is super valuable to, um, to potential recruiters to know how much you would like to get paid. Um, easy enough to figure out what you should get paid. You can go and look at Glassdoor and you can put in your experience, your geographic location and your skills. And it'll give you a, a salary range, so you can put that in there. Uh, this doesn't currently show up on uh, Balance Search, but it will in future. You can list the industries you worked in. Um, and then here we have uh, some work suggestions. So you can say how you want to work, what kind of work you're looking for, your level of data science experience, what you're doing currently, highest level of education. And here, this is the really important option and actively seeking employment or consulting with Chase in data science. If you are open to employment, you have to put that there. Otherwise, you won't show up in Zimbi and search. Uh, are you willing to re relocate? And a little bit about data science training. Um, then here, this is the skills matrix that we mentioned before, the thing that showed up in purple on talent search. And you have six, se six, six sections, uh, data mining and statistical analysis, data visualization, BI, well, database management and architecture, cloud and distributed computing, and machine learning. Uh, if you put a one, that means you have no experience or are not busy learning. Putting it two means you're training and you have some basic competency. A little bit of this. Um, and here you can see that you can change these. So maybe I've been working really hard on my BI and I can now put that on JIT 3 and I would just save the effort. Nice. So I'm going to leave it as it is. Um, so this is really, really important. This gives you, this gives any potential employee essentially an overview of the type of uh, skills that you have. Here you have your education. It's relatively straightforward. You can add as many different degrees as you want there. Same story for work. You can add as many types of work as you've had. You can add that here. You can include key projects and responsibilities, which is really important for people to know what you did at your job. Don't just write data analysts, but rather write the types of analysis that you did, the things you were responsible for, and especially the things you were successful at. Very useful. Um, you can add any communities you're a part of. 
You can add publications. This doesn't have to be papers. It can be your thesis. It can be blog posts. It can be YouTube links. You can add literally anything as a publication. And then here is where you list all of your potential tools that you know. So as you can see, my tools are much more on the project management side of things, communications. I don't have any, uh, any explicit tools, but say you wanted to add some skills in Amazon you can see there are a large number of choices here. If it, your, what you're looking for doesn't show up, you can just add it in tools and languages. So I can say EC2, maybe I want to say I have Bango. Okay, but I, Streamlit isn't an option. Then I would uh, come down to the bottom and add Streamlit. Yeah. There. Streamlit. Yeah. Like that. And then just make sure you um, save it. I do see some questions. Thank you for putting your questions in the chat. I'm going to answer all of them. Then last, but very, very importantly at the moment, you have a place to upload your CV. You just pick here to upload. You can choose your CV and upload it. Please, please make sure you include it in today's CV. As I mentioned in the future, we'll turn this profile into a CV. You won't need to upload your CV, but for now, it's really important that you do include your CV for us so that, um, so that our users can, I mean, our business, our clients can sign your CV and review it in the, don't forget to click save at the end. And there you have it. That is everything that you need to know about updating your profile to be uh, job ready or hiring ready. There are also some settings that you should check in terms of notifications and admissions for use of personal information. And then here yeah, you can notifications for that stuff. Really rare. And then when you're happy, you can click view my profile and you can make a look at all your your great data science portfolio. So uh let me wrap up by saying that we hope that there's a very simple formula here on Zindi. Complete your profile, be active on Zindi, and you will get it. That's what we want to offer every single Zindian on our platform. Um, of course, these things take time and it's a bit of a chicken and an egg situation. We have to make sure that we have good database so that uh, companies hire, vice versa. We have to have companies hiring so that people want to get their profiles. But I really do encourage you, this is the best, doing what I've talked about today gives you the best chance that you have to get a job on Sydney. So I encourage you all to do that. Tell others, please. Uh, this is the start of our uh, talent journey on Zindi, if you want to call it that. And I know that a lot of people see Zindi as the place to participate in competitions. It's much, much more than that. Uh, we hope that uh, every you all can see that today. And I hope that um, you'll tell others about it as well. Finally, I included a little secret that I like to remind people because I know how many people on Zindi see that uh, or believe that you have to win a hackathon to be good at data science or you have to win a hackathon to be uh, able to get a job. And as we've heard from Eniola, as we heard from Daniel, companies don't care that you don't win hackathons. Winning a hackathon is very impressive, but it's a very particular skill set. And honestly, the skills you develop just participating, just Getting to make a submission, you have to demonstrate a knowledge of maths and statistics. You have to demonstrate a knowledge of Python. You likely use Colab to manage these things. You possibly use GitHub to publish your models. You've done a bunch of documentation. You finally made a submission. You built the actual model. You did model tuning. You did um, uh, feature engineering. Those are all incredibly valuable skills, regardless of how well your, your model performs. If you're on the leaderboard, you're eligible. And I think, I hope that you'll all take that message home with you. If you're on the leaderboard, you're eligible. So, uh, I did see a number of questions in the comments, so I'm going to get straight to that now. Um, if you want to edit your profile, you can just go to zindi.africa forward slash me, or you can scan that QR code that will take you straight to your profile. I'd encourage you all to go and edit your profile straight away if you if you can. 
Uh, let me get to the question. Okay, so I know there was a question about what a data science earns. That's an incredibly difficult question to answer because uh, the world is a very big place. Um, data science scientists can earn almost anything. What I would recommend is that you um, take a look at Glassdoor. I use glassdoor.com. Um, it is a place where you can put in your skills, put in your geographic location, put in your years of experience, and it will give you a range of salaries. Um, but uh, data scientists, it, it's, it's an almost impossible question to answer. Data scientists in uh, some of the poorer countries in Africa might earn a thousand dollars a month. A data scientist in Silicon Valley might earn ten or fifteen or twenty thousand dollars a month. It's a huge range. So it very much depends on the company that you're speaking to and what you believe that you are worth. So that's the best I can say about uh, it that I can say about salaries. And I hope that I hope that helps. And as we as we in fact move forward with this talent journey, we hopefully will actually have more information on that. Um, we may we'll be able to gather data from hires, so hopefully we will uh, be able to share some more information with you in future. Um, okay, are the job opportunities only sent to those who rank well on Cindy competitions? No, that is uh, entirely not the case. Uh, the, the way we've designed talent search has been to actually minimize how important rank is, and I can tell you from my conversations with a lot of clients, they don't care what your rank is. Rank is uh, much more about personal achievement and um, maybe even ego. The rank on a Zindi competition or the rank on a modern Zindi overall is basically irrelevant to employees. So what they care about is that you have demonstrated some skills, um, you participated and you've shown ambition and determination, and that you have develop some skills outside of just the technical. You sh you show an ability to communicate. You, uh, you have worked well in teams. Um, you, you've shared your skills on the leaderboard. Those kinds of things like, matter a lot. It's um, a question about recording. We'll share the recording. Um, is the talent search algorithm based on your competition rank? So as you saw on talent, on the talent search, there are ways to sort by rank or by profile completeness. We will be adding that, uh, adding other ways to sort, uh, you know, sort by experience, sort by starting salary, those kinds of things. Um, so, so it's one of the ways you can uh, be sorted on the platform. Uh, there was a publication that I was part of, but not the lead project officer. Can I add it? Mate, absolutely. I would encourage you to, like on LinkedIn, I'd enc encourage you to use Zindi like your portfolio. Uh, share anything that you've worked on. You know, you might have done a Dina project. You might have worked on a school project. You might have participated in hackathons. Anything like that, that you can share and show the work that you've done and the events you've done, you should definitely post that. Uh, two questions. Are the job okay? There, I think that's uh, Pete. Thank you. Uh, is it possible to receive notifications on your phone when collapse when contacted on Zindis? And uh, what well, the official question will the emails will be sent by the same Zindi at Zindi Africa? Um, you will get any notifications from Zindi via email. Uh, at the moment, that's the best thing we can do. We're not intending to build a Zindi for your phone. So as long as you can access, um, access your email, your email address, you'll on your phone. You'll see it on your phone. That's the best I can say. Um, this Zindi only for data scientists. I'm a project manager, product manager. Sorry. Uh, that is a great question. I think that what we've seen is that generally speaking, people that we work with know that Zindi is focused on data science. And so generally the types of jobs that people tend to Zindi to find or to recruit for 
are data related. They'll be a principal data scientist, or they'll be a cloud engineer, or a machine learning engineer, or they'll be a junior analyst, those kinds of things where you, where they know people work with data. Um, I would encourage you, if you have an interest in data science, to try and participate in some data science competitions on Zindi. Um, I think product managers don't don't have to have in-depth technical skills. Um, yeah, I think I think we might find a place in future where we start to uh, find ways to vet for more broad skills. But right now, we we are really focused on anything data skill related. We are working on things like data visualization and data analytic challenges on Zindi, and that will be a way to improve your skill set or demonstrate your skills as a product manager, because analytics is an important skill for a product manager. But at the moment, the focus really is on, on data more than on product or general tech. There are many other platforms that focus on, on general tech. Okay. Uh, that's the end of the questions I can see in the chat. Do, are there any others? Um, please feel free to more mute, uh, if you would like to, uh, if you have any specific questions, I'm very happy to answer them or any feedback, any concerns that you might have, any ideas for ways this can be improved, please just let me know. It doesn't look like it. It looks like that is all. I hope that this has been useful. Thank you all for hanging around till the end. I really appreciate your time and your attention. Yes, I will wrap up by saying that uh, you are all the reason that Zimbi exists. Zimbi exists to serve our users, our future data scientists, help you get jobs help you get ahead in your career. So please use and each to it for a stick dent. Please tell your friends. And um, I hope that this has been valuable. And I hope that you will get a job on Zindi because of this. If you do, in the next few months, have people reaching out, please let me know. Uh, we love to hear success stories. So uh, if this has been successful or valuable, that would be super, super nice to hear from you. Good. Uh, thank you all very much. And... Uh, We'll see you on the leaderboard.